it was after I took my mentorship with you before that it was like a year what was it a little over a year of just me spinning my wheels and then I did my mentorship with you and literally like within probably not even a month I signed my first client who this guy was making like 300,000 a month Mm. which is insane and I was just like I already had my media buyer put in place he helped me out with all the service delivery super good so it's like I was kind of just sitting back and I was like damn like it's just scalable at that point. Once you, once that kind of clicks, it's like, okay, I could scale this thing to 20 grand a month, 30 grand a month, you know what I mean? It's back with a brand new video. And today we've got another student interview. It seems like you guys are really enjoying this. And so today I'm chatting with one of my students, Jake. Now, before joining my mentorship, Jake had taken a bunch of different courses with no results. He hadn't signed his first client and had been spinning his wheels for over a year. After joining my mentorship in late February, he was able to sign his first client in March which is pretty crazy, and has managed to go from zero to 7K per month, getting very close to the 10K month mark now. In our upcoming chat, we'll dig into his journey, going from bartendering to now owning a successful e-com agency. So very excited for this, and without further ado, let's get right into it. How's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, just woke up about an hour ago, just chilling. Trying not to drink coffee, but I drank a little bit of coffee before this. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Yeah, you've got a, you've got a tan as well, man. You're still in, in LA, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm still in LA. I went to, um, from 4th of July, I went to the beach with my girlfriend and just okay. chilled, played beer pong, hung out, try not to drink either, but um, yeah, I had fun. Got a little too okay. sunburned, but it turned into a tan. Which is... <laughs> That's good, man. Um, I didn't know you were, so, you, you, so you, you do have a girlfriend or is that like a recent? Okay. Yeah, no, I've, ha I've had one for, I think going on three years now. Okay. How do you, how do you handle that? Like the, the work versus you know, finding time for the, the, the relationship? Uh, it was hard in the beginning. Um, kind of just setting, I'm, I'm a very, a person that has to have like, um, everything written down, like the to do for the day. I realized that that helps me a lot mm -hmm. better. So I just kind of tell her what times I'm going to work and I try to put my the other room, leave my phone charging in the other room. So I don't have distractions. And then, um, yeah, I hit her, I call her on my lunch break. She's always working. So it kind of works out good now. But in the mm -hmm. beginning, it was hard. It was hard because it's, you know, you have a girlfriend. They're always going to want to be talking to you and hitting you up and stuff. So you have to just put that away because it's a distraction. Yeah. Uh, do you find, I mean, when when do you, when do you guys like meet? Um, is there like a set time or, or set day of the week that you guys like do make plans or, or is that spontaneous? Well, it's been good lately because my situation is kind of different because she lives, we don't live together right now. So we just really hang out on the weekends and then sometimes on the weekdays, hmm. which is perfect. I know it sounds kind of weird, but she lives two hours away. Right. right so right. it's, it kind of, it kind of works out and I'm going to move out to kind of where she's at and we're going to get a place together. Um, Great. probably in like a few months. Okay. So it'll be cool. But that's really when it's going to start where I have to be like, okay, I have to figure out how to plan it differently if we're spending a lot of time together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I asked this man is because, um, a lot of, you know, one of the things that, that I noticed is a lot of, especially, you know, mentees, uh, I'm not sure if you saw, um, I think it was Patrick uh, who posted, uh, who posted something about, um, your know, relationships and, and how, how, you know, you guys and, and myself included handle it. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very interesting topic for, for a lot of entrepreneurs because, you know, do, do you have a girlfriend? Do you know, like, is that a distraction? Like how, how can you, uh, how can you manage it? I personally have a girlfriend. I think it's like a, a really cool it, it can be a really cool addition um and it can actually propel you forward do you feel like it, that's the case like it helps you like move forward or it helps you like get out of your uh, get out of your head sometimes or like how, how does it how do you see it helping your entrepreneurial journey or, or how it comes together with your your journey i think it definitely helps i uh it sounds bad but i think if i was single um I'd be going out you know what i mean i'd be wanting to talk to girls mm -hmm. and hang out with my guy friends and just it would be hard not to do that. You know what I mean? If, you, if you're single, cause it's like you make a little bit of money and then you go out and chill with people and stuff. It's like, it's kind of, it's a huge waste of time in reality. But if you have a girlfriend, yeah. it's like, it kind of like grounds you and you can just work on your business and then focus on your relationships. Cool. Yeah, it does, man. And I think a lot of people see like relationships as a, as a, as a distraction, but the biggest distraction is chasing women, you know, and, and, and chasing relationships uh, or, or ch chasing. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, look for, for some people, it, it, it's definitely worth, their time because maybe they don't want to settle but when you're an entrepreneur you really don't i mean it's a, I, I do see it as an attraction as a, something that takes away your energy but speaking of moving 
I know last time we, well, a few months back, right, we had a chat over your, you know, what you were thinking, which was moving out of your, you know, the apartment that you shared with a bunch of friends. So walk us through, and by the way, I put you on the spot straight out of the bat, but it's because I like, you know, we're, we're probably recording at this point. Um, but, um, but walk us through like what your plan was or how you structure things in terms of like the living situation, because I know that you were living with a bunch of friends, right? Or a bunch of roommates, right? Are you still like, how does that, how does that look? You're going to laugh. Yeah, I still am. But okay. the reason why you're going to laugh is because I have, I have like this little work area in this loft Great. kind of that I can work at yeah. and it still gets kind of loud, like people walking downstairs and stuff, but I'll show you. I literally have like, well, I have this 20,000 a month by January 1st. <laughs> I like it. Just to keep it, keep it in my head. And I literally set up like this stupid, like cubicle type thing. Just, just it's so solid. I could like, yeah, just so I could just focus in my little cave and just get my work done. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm still, I'm still in where I'm at. Um, I'm going to get an apartment with my girlfriend, like I said, in like two months, which will be mm. cool. Um, which I get a little two bedroom. So one's like an office and then one's just obviously our bedroom. So yeah, right now yeah. it's kind of still weird, but uh, working through it. No, I, I like that answer, man, because a lot of people think you, you've got to have like the this crazy setup. And I mean, if you don't mind me asking, how much are you currently uh, at a month? Because I know I, okay, so, and, and you're ba basically like really close to that 10K, right? You, you said like two deals are online. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. As I mean, maybe when I post this, like you're already at that mark, but um, it's it's cool to see, right? That you don't need the, this fancy setup. Like your setup was far from ideal. You know, having a bunch of people in the in, in the same apartment, like, you know, <laughs> probably not the quietest of people, right? Um, so how, how do you, how do you do, like, how did you structure that? Apart from obviously building this cubicle, were there like a, you know, a set structure or like a set routine or, a specific way that you structured your day or maybe like you you i don't know a specific conversation that you had with your roommate roommates to help them understand your goals and your objectives because i know a lot of people are in a similar situation where maybe they're not with their roommates but maybe with their, you know they're working from their family south right uh, with their parents and their siblings there and it's not the most ideal situation so how did that how did that look for you I kind of just let them know when I'm having important calls. And the good thing about that is they, or the good thing about them in this living situation is that they are gone all the time. They're always working. Mm. So I pretty much have the place to myself because I'm the only one that stays home and works yeah. from home, which is cool. Um, but like, yeah, when they're here, I just let them know when I'm having a call and they're super respectful, just close their door and just like chill in their room until I'm done, which is cool. Okay. So it's super um, easy. Yeah. And I'm still, yeah. You sure? <clears throat> I'm still switching up like, uh, my, I know it's it's a rabbit hole, but like looking up morning routines and different things yeah. to, you know, it's like a rabbit hole trying to find what works for you. So I'm trying to figure out like, so I want to wake up at 6.30 and do this, 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 this before this person wakes up. And do, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I'm just trying to find if I work better at night or in the morning. So it's still kind of yeah. just trying to figure out what works best for me, you know? I understand. I mean, it, to, to this day, I still have like, you know, I'm, I'm still constantly tweaking and optimizing the routines in fact i think it's a, it's a good trait right because a lot of people get stuck on one routine and they think they they need to do that every single day regardless of the phase and stage of the journey they're currently at and like different phases require different routines and different structures of of your day yeah totally one of the things that, that you mentioned um that that i found funny but so true right uh was this weird feeling that you had because you felt like it was almost like not too easy, right? But too simple, right? Like, I mean, it was like very hands off at this point, right? Because you'd hire your, your A player, you have the, the structure, like you've, you follow the, the, my mentorship to a T and all, all the stuff, right? You've set all the systems up, um, you're signing clients, like you're booking in the demo calls. And when it comes to like the service delivery, right? You, you were talking about, or, or what specifically came like super easy to you? Like you just found super hands off, like way more than you had anticipated. Well, it was after I took my mentorship with you, before that it was like a year what was it a little over a year of just me spinning my wheels and then i did my mentor trip with you and literally like within probably not even a month i signed my first client who this guy was making like three hundred thousand a month mm. which is insane and i was just like i already had my media buyer put in place he helped me out with all the service delivery super good so it's like i was kind of just sitting back and i was like damn like 
it's just scalable at that point. Once you, once that kind of clicks, it's like, okay, I could scale this thing to 20 grand a month, 30 grand a month. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, yeah. it was really cool, but I felt like I was kind of just sitting back and like not having my media buyer do everything, but that's his job. You know, he's, he's doing the service delivery. I set up all the systems already. And I, you kind of have to, like you said, I had to give myself credit to setting up all the systems and making it easy for him too. you know what I mean? With communications and everything. But it, when somebody else is doing all the service delivery, it kind of feels like you're just sitting back and like, I don't know, they're like they're doing all the work, but that's their job is for that specific part of the agency. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You mentioned, yeah, you mentioned before the mentorship, uh, you were spinning your, spinning your wheels and that's like a, a, a place and a, and a point where that, that a lot of people can resonate with. Uh, what are some of the obstacles that you were coming up again and again that didn't uh, allow you to sign that first client that didn't allow you to move forward? I think it was mainly outreach. I feel like it was like, I mean, I took a couple courses, which were cool um, from other people and they really got me into the space and, and I learned everything about the space, which was cool. But the outreach was basically, I was spending most of my day finding and qualifying like 25 people, mm -hmm. 25 leads. And then I would have to reach out to those 25 leads and um, they would say to customize each one of those emails. So basically mm -hmm. I was reaching out to 25 people a day who didn't give a shit about me and basically yeah. it was like F off. Um, and, but I spent all day finding those people and reaching out to them. So the whole day was wasted and I did it like five days a week and I was driving myself nuts and I was like, is, is this even worth it? You know what I mean? And then, um, yeah, like we did the, the ASF and all that, like it literally changed everything. That's how I signed my, that's how I signed that first guy. It was cool. Yeah. Oh, 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 pray to the, the automated sales photo, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to talk a bit about um a bit about the I mean your your past right um because before you were spinning your wheels if I'm not mistaken right you had a a job correct in the music industry or the music space yeah yeah I was well I was making most of my money through bartending which was okay. insane uh, I would work does it pay well bartending by the way there's a friend of mine who wants to do bartending <laughs> it pays decent cool yeah. Yeah, yeah, it pays pretty good, and and you can literally only work like Friday, Saturdays, and make like, like I was making like five, six hundred bucks on a in okay. tips. Okay, so mainly tips, right? Yeah, yeah. So most of it's in tips, but then you still get paid hourly, on mm -hmm. just like a Friday night. So you do that two times, two times a, a week, Friday, Saturday. It's pretty good money. But anyways, I was doing that, but my hours were like nine thirty uh, p.m. and then I would come home at four in the morning. And then, so you have to sleep until 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. I mean, you know what I mean? Just to like recoup. So that was my schedule, which was crazy. And then I was in a band, um, a band that was doing pretty well. We toured um, the U.S. We toured Canada. We went to Russia. Mm. Uh, we toured with some pretty big people, which was cool. Um, but yeah, that whole life is a party too. And it's like, eventually yeah. you kind of get old enough. Like I'm 28 now. You kind of get old enough to where it's like, okay, like I want to do some like big boy stuff you know what i mean like start a yeah. business and not just like blow in the wind and hope that your band's gonna go here or meet this person or you know what i mean yeah. i wanted yeah. to have some more like structure in my life so funny enough is i didn't even think any of this was going to happen but i uh went to the skate park i think i told you this and i broke mm -hmm. my leg while while i was in the band and everything broke my leg um couldn't walk for like a year and i was going crazy like i couldn't walk for a year so i was just googling how to like make money online, blah, blah, blah. Cause I couldn't bartend either. Um, and then I found drop shipping. I mean, everyone did all this in the beginning. I'm sure you probably did something similar, but, um, realized that was all crazy. And then I found the, uh, the agency space. So that's basically how it all started. Mm. It all started with a broken leg and going, going crazy from not being able to walk. That's, funny. Crazy, man. that's a great story. Uh, one of the things that, that I always found interesting about you is that you, you live the party life um way before the business life and and the funny thing is i've seen a lot of people going to like the online business space right because they want to live that life once they make the money right and so i think like a, an interesting conversation is it, 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 once you got that out of the way is there like a sense of oh i i've already lived that life i've already gone through that paradigm like now i want to now want to focus or is it like oh i still want to i still i still have like part of yours in me like i still want to do all that stuff after uh, i get you know i make the money Oh, it's, I don't even, it's so funny. It's, that's literally how I feel. I don't even want to party at all. It's crazy. Like mm. from the time I was, I mean, I've been in bands and playing music since I was like 17. 
Mm. And I'm 28 now. So that whole time literally was just like craziness of just partying, um, playing shows, staying up till four in the morning after shows, coming home and then bartender life. Like I would, that's not good to say, but I would have a few shots or beers before going into work and mm. then serve mm. people alcohol. And so I was just around a bunch of drunk idiots all the time. And like, it kind of does something, especially bartending kind of does something to your brain of just like, you look at these people and it's just like, I'm not saying they're bad or anything, but it's just, um, just that lifestyle of just going and drinking and stuff. It's just a waste of money and waste of time. And it like just affects your health. And there's really no upside unless you, I, I'm just sticking to like, uh, like celebrations, like birthdays. I'll drink a little bit, you know, birthdays, 4th of July, uh, here in, here in the United States and stuff like that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Just keep it to a minimum. Um, and look at it as a celebration when you drink. Like I'm just, I don't really want to drink and go party and stuff. It's, it's a waste of time. Yeah. So yeah, to, to answer your question, yeah, now it's like I could just scale the business and it feels good to not have, I almost feel like an, an old, I uh, feel like I'm like 40, 45, 50 years old or something because now mm. I just want to scale the scale this business, you know? Yeah. In, I think one of the things that you touched on uh, briefly there is uh, the, the, the power of influences, right? Like when you're around the wrong people, like you're bound to do, whack shit like you're about to do the wrong stuff right um what was that transition for you like because a lot of people in the space or gurus they they preach this idea of like oh you need to cut them out right um what was it like for you like did you just like straight out straight up like told, told them like hey this is not for me like i'm, I'm moving away like i, I want to focus on myself or like how was that transition of slowly getting rid of or parting ways with those toxic people in in your life a lot of them, um, I cut out, you know what I mean? A lot of people, especially just in, I don't know, in the, um, in the music scene and stuff too. I just kind of just, I don't really talk to anybody. I just talk to like my same, like three friends from high school and then mm -hmm. my girlfriend, which keeps it, you know, I, I talk to people that I know have my back if anything happened or like people that genuinely care that if I needed something, they would, they would be there not just to socialize, just to, just to, be around the cool people and you know what I mean that kind of stuff yeah I basically just hang out with the same three friends and then hang out with my girlfriend and just focus on my business which keeps it which I like because it keeps it kind of structured it's just my my uh, energy is not split between a bunch of different people and answering a bunch of different people which yeah. is cool yeah. uh speaking of the business side of things right um how do you structure your your day nowadays because you you have uh, you have a bunch of clients uh, at this point. One of the things that, that I, I did want to ask you is, and, and especially for people you know for people that are not in the e-com space just yet, will find this of value. What do you think? What do you think you find the most rewarding out of dealing with e-com clients, or maybe the biggest pain, or like essentially how do you find that relationship of talking to these e-com founders? Like for example, this guy you mentioned, right? He's making three hundred k per month. Does that inspire you? Like, is it cool being that, you know building that relationship? Like do you have you connected with them on a deeper level is it more professional like how does that relationship look like so far for you it's cool it kind of opens up your mind that to to know that okay if this guy's doing it with what his business model is doing i could do the same thing you know what i mean it's cool it's it's funny the it's kind of sad to look back on the mindset i had when i was bartending it's like man if i can only make like next next week if i could just make another 600 bucks and blah 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 blah, blah. it's like crazy and then you could sign a client for 3000 or 4,000, mm. you know what I mean? It changes your whole perspective. So yeah, working with, with clients that are making good money and, and have good products, it's like inspiring to see that their business is built with like five, six employees. Um, it's cool to see their inner op operations too. Um, and it's funny, the in the agency space, they always say the people that make the most money don't really respond and it's hard to get a hold of them. And the people that you charge low fees, uh, low retainers are like, you're pulling your hair out. Mm. because they're always on slack always hitting you up every five seconds that's literally how it is so this guy it's it's really really good really cool but sometimes it's hard because he's he's wearing a bunch of different hats in his business as well so um yeah no it's been cool it's been a huge learning curve too I've, i mean i've only i signed my first client in march so mm. i'm still a newbie right now and uh hopefully i'll get to your point in the year two years and just and just really be able to grasp everything because i'm still um, grasping all the systems and making sure everything's intertwined, you know what I mean? Yeah. With agency, agency. For sure. And that's why I wanted to have you on because sometimes like it's not as, um, like relatable. Right. But I think like you're, you're a prime example of someone who all of a sudden, you know, you have the right map, you, you 
put in the work and then you get a result and and you're slowly but very well slowly very quickly actually uh, but very surely as well uh, scaling this thing you mentioned you've learned a bunch of things right uh from that first client signing which i was really really happy to see as well um so early on what are some of the biggest lessons you've learned so uh, so far since you signed that first client in march basically just do i think duplicating yourself like having things all automated <clears throat> you can't do everything all at once or all yourself i should say um like just pulling my hair out like i was saying sending all these emails out trying to dm people i mean that's a good way to to start and i just didn't really get get anything with that you know having mm -hmm. things automated is huge um that's the that's pretty much the main reason why i feel like kind of just set me off a little bit and then now i could go through and start sending like i'll have my automated stuff on the side and then i could send over looms five looms a day or six looms a day to people like dream clients like you say like um so mm -hmm. it's it's basically just duplicating yourself is, is huge and then um yeah once once i got a client i learned um you just learn how to talk to business owners better and, and you can see their perspective in their business and, and it just changes everything compared to just doing it all on your own. And you feel like you, when you're doing it all on your own, you feel like you can't even, um, you feel like you're almost like not worthy to, to make the money that you see all these other people making. You know what I mean? You're like, I, I feel like I can't do it. But then once you sign somebody, it's like, Oh, like, mm. yeah, I'm the same as this dude that's making uh 200,000 a month or whatever. You know what I mean? He, they just yeah. worked on it harder or scaled or found out better ways to, uh, more efficient ways to, to run their agency. I, that's such a great point. And that's why one of the things I wanted to ask you is you brought up this, you know, you, you brought up that for you, it would have, it would have seemed crazy. I mean, it seemed crazy making the money that you're making now with the agency when you were bartending, right? And uh, you mentioned that part of it, you know, part of getting those, you know, get, getting rid of those limiting beliefs is getting a few wins under your belt and then just seeing how like this thing can really scale, right? Are there any other things that, uh, Jake, that helped you overcome those limiting beliefs um, around money? Like, uh, was that a, a progression? Like when you started out, what was your perception of money? How has it changed? Essentially, what has helped you level up your money mindset, right? Uh, in a very cliche manner. I think just being in the space. Um, because before, yeah, I was just like bartending, you make like, <clears throat> I think most you probably make like four or $5,000 a month and that's like good. And that's what most people make. So you're like, okay, this is safe, whatever. And then you get into this space and you see people that are making 10K, 20K. And then when I was bartending, I used to think, okay, $10,000 a month, you have to be like a doctor or something crazy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to have all this debt. Um, but then once you kind of break out of that paradigm, it's like, oh damn, you can actually make really good money doing this and you're just growing a legit business. You know what I mean? It's not just some fly by night, um, like you say, like drop shipping or something. Not talking talking shit about drop shipping, but um, you're not selling toothbrushes online. You're starting yeah. an actual business that you can grow yeah, yeah. to ten k a month. So, but yeah, just just basically being in being in the space, mm -hmm. like just basically seeing other people's like success stories and all yeah. that stuff, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, when it comes to the e comm agency model, right, which is something that that I preach a lot. I mean, when you were spinning uh, spinning your wheels, right, were you in the e comm space before joining the the mentorship? Um, <clears throat> so it was kind of dumb, but I, I learned, uh, or actually I took my first course in like December of, or November, December of 2019. So before all this stuff went down, I'm not going to say, but before all this stuff went down, um, mm -hmm. in 2020, I was focusing on, on local lead generation. So I did that okay. from, from literally, uh, I think I started probably February of 2020 when I really started doing outreach for local legion. And then that's right when, right before the world started crumbling with, for local businesses, mm -hmm. but I still reached out to them all the way until August of 2020. So I tried to do the whole local thing while all of them were dying. And then, uh, August, I really got, I took a, a different course too that about, um, just e-com, just the, just the model of doing agency stuff for, for e-commerce. Mm -hmm. And then it, it did a little bit, um, for me, but then yeah, and then I took your mentorship in February of 2021, and that's really just like my everything exploded. I was just like, oh, now it, it was finally like the key that kind of unlocked everything to to realize that okay, this is possible yeah. and this is kind of the right roadmap. So yeah, mm -hmm. basically I was doing lead generation all of 2020, okay. local lead generation. Yeah. Um, apart from from you know and and kind of diving deeper into the mentorship, right? Apart from the automated sales funnel, the outreach side of things, right? The profile funnels, all that stuff. Is there anything else that you would say, okay, this is like a key component that I've seen 
uh, implemented and that I've seen really play a major role in the success of my agency? Oh yeah, uh, the the communication side of everything <clears throat> with clients and mm. and keeping your um, media buyer every uh, the internal communication everything just um, just keeps everything running smoothly. It's not I I think about it too. Like I'll be I'll be doing my communication calls with like my a media buyer or my clients, and I'm like, man, if I didn't have this mentorship, I would literally be like so so stressed out because now it's mm. like everything. Like I said, I like to have everything just written down or scheduled uh, within acuity or scheduled within um, Google calendar. I like everything just, just set up like that. And having the communication part of what you teach is, is mm -hmm. took a huge load off my shoulders. And then um, the sales funnel itself, teaching how you teach the sales funnel, the easy um, to offer all that kind of stuff. Like the, the way you teach all that just makes yeah. it super simple of how to, how to run, actually run the ads and take the complexity out of, of, um, not running 10 different ads for a hundred different products and just having everything um, simplified. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, basically the whole thing. And then even I still watch over and, and listen to <clears throat> like detoxifying your life and, and, and yeah. stuff like that. That's, that's my main thing right now because I think the only thing for me is coffee. I, I got to just stop drinking coffee because I realize that yeah. it gives you a boost. And then, um, after the boost, you're kind of just stressed out for the rest of the day and you're kind of just, your brain's mm. everywhere. So that's, that's my main thing. But I mean, how much are you drinking now? Like, like a half a cup of coffee, like nothing. Nice. I used to go from, no, yeah, it's, it's nothing, but I still just want to get it out, you know, just so yeah. I have, I wake up and I just drink my, I don't know, lemon water or something. You know what I mean? Just everything's super clean. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. How do you think, because uh, I, I think that's such a key point that, that you brought up, the communication protocols and having all that side of things like systemized. How do you think your relationship with the uh, your media buyer has developed across the months? Like, what, what, what do you think are some of the turning points that you've seen? Um, are you guys, gee, like, you know, have you built that rapport or where does that relationship stand and how has the progress in that relationship affected the results and, and the way you handle the agency? He's really cool. Yeah. He's a really cool guy. He's in the United States too. And, um, yeah, we talk about jujitsu. We talk about like the UFC fight that, that came up okay. just like, it's not like super, I mean, it is when, when businesses get done, it is like not formal, but you know, business, but, um, but yeah, before like the client hops on and stuff, we just talk about it's It's really cool. And the, the communication protocols really made helped help that instead of us just jumping on a call whenever something went wrong or something, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? We have, um, like weekly client updates where me and him jump on a call for like an hour. We just go through everything. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's been, it's been really cool. I'm actually trying to find another media buyer right now. So I'm going through that, that kind of headache to sift through all the people um, so that I could just really scale and bring on like four or five more clients. Okay. So that's kind of like, I'm taking two or three steps back to take 10 steps forward. So <clears throat> I kind of slowed down on outreach right now and I'm just trying to find a really good, another a player to bring on so I could just bring on another four or five clients and then, and then deal with that. That's massive, massive. Um, how much, what level of freedom does does your media buyer have when it comes to speaking with clients? Uh, you mentioned that he jumps on the calls. Is there anything else um, that that really has taken uh, the load from you that that you uh, have found insanely valuable? Yeah, I mean, he's an A player. So I I even told him I'm like <clears throat> I kind of feel bad, like because he's just talking the whole time. So he's a really mm -hmm. good people person. He's a that's somebody you want to bring on your team, you know, not somebody that's shy and doesn't want to be on camera or anything. Yeah. Um, and he just comes up with all these cool ideas, like different, like maybe we can throw on an SMS text thing, or maybe we could do mm. some, this part for Clavio, or he's just a whole well-rounded dude. And yeah, yeah. And I kind of feel bad cause I'm just sitting back and I mean, I'm still, I'm not, I mean, I've been in the space for a while, but I've only had clients since March. So it's hard not to, I think I've talked about it with you, but to feel that like imposter syndrome, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, where you're course, just sitting back and you're like, you're like, damn, this guy's like really good. Why doesn't he just do his own agency? Why, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like those thoughts pop into your head, but it's like, I think yeah. it just takes time. It takes time to kind of just learn from him. Um, I ask him to kind of walk me through the ad accounts and stuff just to pick his brain. And I, I'm just honest with him. I'm like, you know, I just want to learn from you too, because you're so good, you know? And he kind of just helps me and walks me through what, mm -hmm. what he's thinking and different, different angles and stuff he's doing. So yeah, he's, he's super cool. <clears throat> that's the hard part is I want to find another guy that's, that's in his same realm, which is very hard. So if I had two A players like that, it would be insane. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. And I think 
uh, a point that you brought up there is is the imposter syndrome, right? Um, understanding that like all these thoughts are, I mean, as much as as, as they're real, like it, it doesn't really make sense, right? Because you know, the different people are, are cut up for different skills and, and different tasks, right? And this guy clearly is an A player at what he does. You obviously are more of the, the, the business owner um, type of guy, right? Like you, you like building systems, structures, seeing the 30,000 feet view. Are there any like, specific mindsets or specific things that have uh, allowed you to get rid to an extent? I, I know you still have it, right? And which is completely normal. Um, but uh, get rid of, of that imposter syndrome because I know a lot of people deal with that in the space, right? Uh, and and uh, suffer from that. So, are, are there any specific things or tips um, that have allowed you to to uh, to get rid of that imposter syndrome to an extent? Yeah, I think it's just um, I think it's just like a a scarcity mindset that you have to get past. You know, thinking that <clears throat> it's all going to crumble and you don't know what you're talking about and blah blah blah. But it's like if you think back that you do know what you're talking about, you have learned. And a thing that does help is like it's just going over um, the stuff we've talked about or just learning more about just what your service is in general. It helps mm. me a lot and gives me a lot more yeah, confidence, sure. you know, taking notes, taking notes on different, um, either Facebook, Google, or email marketing, stuff like that. Just, just learning new, tr what's, what's kind of trending when it comes to what's going on, uh, when it comes to advertising and everything that really helps because when you go into calls, you know what you're talking about. You're not just relying on, on, on the media buyer or something like that. So I think, yeah, just, just breaking out of that and, and realizing that that's a scarcity mindset. And, and there's, a, there's, what what i think there's like 28 million e-commerce businesses online mm. something crazy like that so it's like just re keep realizing that and you're like oh yeah i can easily sign 10 guys you know yeah yeah, yeah. um so i think this, it's that kind of thinking yeah i think what you said there is 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 incredibly important right like obviously um getting progressively better and better and better at, at your craft um another thing that i i think uh, that, you know that I think is incredibly important that you mentioned is having radical honesty and transparency like not being scared of saying like internally with your team member right saying like hey I don't know this can you explain that to me right because they are the experts in that area like you know in, in fact I think you can go, if anything what I found is it empowers them right because you're giving them you tell them like hey I've brought you on I, I know I know how this area works of the the agency right but I brought you on because you're the expert at this right I'm expecting you to be the expert at this. I'm expecting you to lead this division, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm here like signing these this big lines for you. I'm, I'm, I'm here like building the structures for you so you can thrive, right? But when it comes to that, uh, to all that stuff, like I want to learn from you, right? Now, the same, like, the same way that you're going to learn from me and that I'm going to build you up, I want to learn from you. And I think having that, you know, transparent and honest communication and interaction with your media buyer instead of like trying to be, you know, trying to have like this, um, you know, in insecure like leader, you know uh, uh, you know syndrome where you, like you want to be like seen as this you know big leader and know-it-all type of guy is such a powerful mindset man yeah that, that'll never work the the fake people see through that <clears throat> yeah in a heartbeat if, if you're fake and you're trying to be like some top dog that's you know i i think that it, i don't know it's just it's cool to learn from people that know more than you and just to humble yourself and and mm -hmm. yeah to, to always be in that student mindset and not think that you know everything that's how you keep growing. I mean, I, I know it sounds cliche, but once you think you're the top, the, once you think you're hot shit, you're not going to go anywhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a super point. When, has it ever got, got into a point where a client, well, it gets very technical, right? Or a client asks, uh, you know, asks like, I don't know, maybe if you're, if you're the one running the ads or something like that, uh, have you had that honest and transparent conversation with prospects as well where you've said like hey no you know i've you know luckily i've got someone that does that for you and he's one of you know one of the best in the world uh have you had that honest conversation or has it never come up because a lot of people i know are you know they, they have this also this fear of you know not sounding super you know super like like an expert right on, on those quotes and obviously you have to know what you're talking about and you have to have a, a very specific approach to results but you're not expected to be the expert right in in, in the room has that conversation uh uh, uh risen up oh yeah I, I bring it up on purpose especially on um sales calls just to get it out of the way you know um i basically say that we have an a player on the team and i basically say that <clears throat> this guy is amazing he's the best he's done this blah 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 and i'm not just saying it out of nowhere because he actually is really good so i talk about how good he is at everything and i tell them that i'm, I'm really good at ads too but i'm focused on on communication protocol, setting up systems. So mm -hmm. I just tell them what I do, what my role is as the CEO founder. And yeah. I say that it's, it's good that you're going to be communicating with this guy all the time because he has your undivided attention when I'm going to be 
I'm still gonna be checking in and everything, but I'm gonna be doing other things as well. So I say that this guy's gonna be on Slack. He's not gonna answer in less than an hour. And that's usually how it is. So it's like, mm. you basically have an A player that you can, that's at your fingertips and they love that. Yeah. Dude, that, that, put a, that puts a, a big smile on my face. Everything's just so crystal clear, you know? And, and everything's, you know, when you're that honest and when you're that transparent and then you use that to your advantage, like as, as a selling point, right? Because it is a selling point, right? Um, everything's just so frictionless, you know? Because they, they're like, oh shit, this guy's honest, right? Instead of like being so caught up like in their head, like trying to be, you know, trying to uh, be someone they're not, you're, you're just like, hey, like I'm not, I'm not the one gonna be, uh, who's going to be running the ads, right? Like I'm great at this. I build the systems. Like I've created an incredible team, you know, I've... I, I, I have uh, incredible communication protocols. Like you'll see once you're inside the reporting systems that we've built, like you're going to be quite amazed by all that stuff, right? But when it comes to the service delivery, or you're going to be talking with Chris, right? Um, yeah, it, I mean, it, it shows why why you're you're getting those results. Yeah, yeah, that's that's huge. Just just being honest, because people, like I said, people could see through all of your. Um, I'm not going to say insecurities, but people. Could see, I mean, you could tell when somebody's putting on an act. Mm. And that's usually comes from insecurity and, and then you're, you're not going to get the sale. But if you're just kind of just laid back and not, not, um, cause they could smell desperation on you too, yeah. even if it's subconscious, if you're really like antsy and trying to put on this weird act, like people are just like, I don't, this guy's sketchy. I don't want to talk to this guy. But if you're just super yeah. honest and you don't really, you, I go into the mindset of these calls is like, okay, I don't really need you. I don't know you. Um, you can close the laptop on me and, and, and flip me off cool. I'm never going to see you again. You're just some random person. <laughs> but then if you sign them, they could become a cool friend. You can, they can come up, become yeah. another mentor. Um, so I just don't put too much into it. I know it's easier said than done, but cause my first few sales calls, like obviously are awful and you're yeah, a nervous yeah. dork. You just feel like a dork, but, um, but yeah, they get easier. The, the more yeah. and more you do it, the easier it gets, you know, that's such a key point, man. Um, and that a really good mindset. And I think this point of like radical transparency, when I when I mention to people on my YouTube videos, uh, like just be radically transparent, I feel like a lot of people are like, ah, it doesn't mean that, right? Like I, I can probably like, you know, uh, insert a little lie in here and, you know, insert a little lie there. But no, like I'm not saying, you know, radical transparency does not mean being a dork and saying like, you know, I, I don't know anything about ads. Like, I don't know what, it, it doesn't mean that. Like it, it just means framing things positively in a way that benefits you and benefits the client. Right, but it's everything is just so honest, right? Because like any, there's nothing that you that you say there, right? When you say like I've got this expert, right? But I'm 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 focused on these areas of the business and this is where I'm really really strong at. There's nothing that you've said there that is not true. In fact, everything is just so radically transparent. But but it's not being like a it's not you know basically uh, exposing your your weaknesses. No, it's turning your perceived weaknesses that a lot of people perceive as weaknesses into massive massive strengths uh, and. When I tell you like that radical transparency, you've probably seen this, right? The reaction on on like uh, prospects' faces, they're like, "Holy shit!" Like this guy, just you know, it's it's refreshing to see. Have you ever gotten one of those like comments? Like, it's it's refreshing to see your your approach. I could just kind of tell that that um, they're like, "Okay, yeah, we really want to work with you guys. You guys seem really cool." Um, and then I I look at it too as like the guy that <clears throat> started McDonald's. He's not flipping burgers, you know. He's set up the mm. systems and processes, or he, he actually hired other people that were better than him to set up the systems and processes hired other people to flip the burgers. So it's like, if you look at your agency like that, and you're not just some freelancer, um, you're the dude that sets up all the, all the uh, systems processes. And then you hire, I mean, you're not going to hire the guy to flip the burgers, but the guy, the guy mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. the, the, the deep work, um, whatever your, your service you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it kind of takes you out of that mind frame of that imposter syndrome. Like I said, you, you see yourself more as a founder CEO, um, which is really cool. Yeah, for sure. What are you excited about uh, going forward? Obviously, get into a 10K club. It's going to be big. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you to, uh, to be in there. But is there anything uh, that you're looking forward to? Uh, I'm just looking forward to more, even just streamlining it even more. You know what I mean? Just, mm -hmm. just um, not taking myself out of the business because I still obviously want to be in it. That's what gets me up in the morning. It's like, that's like my new, my, my passion is still always music, but I almost have this feeling like, with the agency, like when I first found out to play music, it's like exciting because you can, you can grow yeah. with it. So I still obviously want to be in it and just, just optimize it. But um, yeah, just learning how to make it more streamlined. So it's like these little hiccups that pop up, <clears throat> you put out those fires and they're done. They're not always going to be done for good, but mm. just having everything streamlined, having uh, like three A players, like a, maybe a, a VA, that's amazing. A couple media mm. buyers, 
uh, maybe even a CMO, just, just something that's, it, to, to where it really feels like a, I mean, it's still, it feels like a legit business right now, but just to where it really is like, okay, yeah. I have all these A players. I could just scale this thing as far as I want, or I could just chill on it if I want to. That's basically what I'm excited for. And then the money will come, you know, I just, I'm not really a, a guy that wants to be driving Lamborghinis and stuff anyways. It's cool, but yeah, um, yeah it's, I, I want to basically just whatever money I can, just maybe put that into real estate in the future or something like that. Mm. But, but yeah, it's just basically just streamlining. Everything is really cool. Do, do you see yourself doing anything in, in the music industry? Yeah. So basically um, I still have friends that want to start bands and stuff, but my, my uh, time has obviously been on this. Um, mm. I still, so I, I, my, my dream would be to get like a three bedroom, either a three bedroom house and just have like a, um, obviously my bedroom and then have an office room for agency yeah. stuff and then have a, have an actual studio, a soundproof studio. So that um, I think it's important to have hobbies too. So you're not just yeah. working all day and you're not looking up marketing videos at night and your brain's still going. It's 12 in the morning and you're like, new iOS 14 update. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm screwed. And you go to yeah, bed yeah. thinking how screwed you are because Facebook did something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just to be able to just, okay, set nine to five or seven to four, whatever. And then just mm -hmm. close your laptop. You just tell, like you tell your clients your time, yeah. so close your laptop and then go into the studio and just play music with your friends. Yeah. have a good night that's that's the key is just having it streamlined and then be able to just close a laptop and then just focus on a passion just so that the next morning you're refreshed to work on your business mm. you know have, have you found a, a way to integrate music uh at this current time into that routine or um yeah it's um it's definitely more sparse than it was i used to play like <clears throat> six six hours a day like five hours a day just practicing yeah. and what instrument man i, I never asked I don't think uh, guitar, guitar right. but I could play. Yeah. Play mainly everything, but um, yeah, guitar. Um, but yeah, I still, I still incorporate it. <clears throat> but right now I think my passion is obviously the agency. I feel more passion for this. I'll pick up my guitar just when I'm just hanging out. But I, I mean, I played guitar for since I was 12. So I've been playing mm -hmm. for so long, you know, I don't even know I'm 28 now. So I've been playing for a long time. Um, so now this is like my new passion, which is exciting. And then, um, yeah, once I get that three bedroom house or three bedroom apartment and turn that into a little studio, that's when I could really focus on it. And it's kind of nice taking a break because <clears throat> I was touring and doing all that stuff for so long to just take a break from it. It's kind of like mentally freeing my mind up to focus on, on this business, you know, hundred percent. I think, uh, brother, that's a good way to wrap it up. Um, any, do you have any, any final comments, any, I don't know, anything, anything else uh, you want to say? I just want to say, uh, yeah, I'm honored. I'm honored that you brought me on here. I was, I was actually surprised. I was like, he's not going to hit me up when I'm at 50 K a month in a year or something, two years. Um, mm -hmm. but not, yeah, thanks man. Thanks for everything. If it wasn't for you, I would be, I don't even know if I'd still be trying to pursue this. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that brother. And honestly, one of the things about like this, these, uh, interviews is it's not so much where you're at because I know you're going to blow past like the 20k per month and you know 30k per month and, and we'll pass that you know we'll be on that and, and we'll do another student interview you know once you're at 50k per month and all that stuff um but it's it's like for me it's all about like where the person started that you know and like seeing a really cool journey because I, sometimes like people can resonate with that way more and, and that's like much more relatable than someone who's you know already crushed it right again that that's still that's still really cool and, and inspiring but i do want to have like um, people from all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, walks of, of life. And I, I think your story is a very cool one, you know, going from the party guy, you know, uh, not focused, you know, in, in, in this kind of like toxic environment, um, making decent money with bartending to, to, to then having this unfortunate event and then turning it into like one of the biggest decisions of your life and into a, what, what's now been a massive opportunity and a massive shift in, in your life. And I'm, I'm very looking forward to, to seeing what you do, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again so much. And we'll we'll obviously uh, keep talking um, because uh, you're obviously M T, uh, so we'll we'll stay in touch. Uh, that's for sure. Um, but I appreciate you for jumping on, man. And uh, yeah, anything you need, uh, you've got me. Uh, you've got me. Cool, man. Thanks for having me. All right, big hug, and uh, we'll speak soon. All right. So that is that for my chat with Jake, a very interesting one. And I really hope you could take a lot of juicy, valuable nuggets away from it. Now, if you're looking to start or scale your agency, maybe you're feeling like you're spinning your wheels. Maybe you've already tried a bunch of courses, but didn't quite crack it. And you're looking to just get results. Then you might want to check out my mentorship. The first thing that we do is we jump on a call, get to know you a bit better and see if you'd be a good fit. So if you are interested in that, it's definitely not for everyone. It is paid. 
Uh, so keep that in mind. So definitely not for everyone. But if you're looking to get results, go ahead and check out the first link in the description. That is a link to the scheduler where you can book in a time that best suits you. And then we can discuss further. So with that being said, hope everything's going well in your journey. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.